Mr. Hector right. Munoz, thank you very much for coming on to theboxingbar.com, and welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And this Saturday night, you're on a big fight card. It's going to be on HBO, and it's going to be a double headline, double header feature featuring Kelly Pavlik, Nonito Donaire, and you, Hector Munoz. What, how was your feeling when you first got the call that you were going to be fighting on this particular big card? Uh, I was thankful to God because uh, usually they call me short notice, five days, two weeks, three weeks, sometimes three week notice. And this time uh, they gave me more time, five weeks of preparation. But like I said, after my fight in April, April 28th, I, I've been in the gym since then, since Monday. Right after that fight on Monday, when I got the victory, I got back in the gym and kept training. And how are you feeling at the moment physically? How prepared are you? I'm um, physically, mentally, and spiritually ready for this fight. I've been training hard. Uh, I'm glad uh, I got a little story to tell you about uh, how I got here. But uh, since Johnny passed away and all that, uh, um, I was working with Chris Chavez, and uh, and I needed some better sparring. And back home, there wasn't uh, there there is fighters out there, but uh, there wasn't the type of fighter that I'm going to be fighting. So uh, Robert Garcia took me in. And like I said, uh, it was a blessing from God because I just knew I had to get out of Albuquerque uh, with faith from God. I just uh, found a flight, a cheap flight to California, came down, uh, not knowing where I was going to stay. I didn't care. I was going to ask Freddie, uh, Freddie Road because I'm cool with him. Uh, I was going to ask him to let me stay at his gym while, while, I, while I was there for a preparation. But uh, sure enough, I called Fernando Vargas. He... Uh, got me a place to stay with his pastor, uh, Pastor Fernie from Victory Outreach, and um, so I got a place to stay, but it was crazy because I just got there. I didn't know where I was going to stay. I was training at the gym at, at Wildcard when I first got here. Didn't bother to check my phone or nothing. Fernando was like, have you texted my pastor? I was like, no, I haven't talked to him. And uh, sure enough, after I got out of the gym, uh, I called Pastor Fernie, and he was like, we're going to go pick you up right now. I was like, what? I was like, let me get I'll pay for a bus to get down to Oxnard or whatever. He's like, no, I already got sending someone over there for you. So I was like, grateful, man. I came on faith, uh, got a place to stay. Uh, Fernando called uh, Robert uh, Garcia and got me uh, to train over there. So Robert's going to be in my corner. I'm Donald Deary. So I've gotten great sparring with uh, Chris Algeri, uh, Belos Garcia. I got a... Uh, Herbert Acero, uh, uh, and uh, and so I, I, I've been getting a lot of great sparring in also. You brought up that you're physically in great shape and ready to go. You also said you're mentally ready to go. You also brought up that Johnny Tapia, of course, the great late Johnny Tapia, who just recently passed not too long ago, is obviously you know not going to be in your corner for this fight for the first time in a, in a very long time. Since you said mentally you are prepared, would that be a true statement knowing that Johnny is physically anyways uh, going to be here. Is that going to be a big change for you and your emotional game going into this fight? It, it's going to be a, 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 a task, I guess. It's going to be a obstacle, but uh, but Johnny is going to be in my corner regardless of whatever. He's, he's there. He's my, he's, he's my angel looking upon me, and, and he's going to be in that corner no matter what. So that's why I said I'm mentally, physically, and spiritually ready for this fight so i'm coming with everything this guy's gonna be running i'm, I'm not even joking uh, when i see something when i'm in shape i know i could i know i could talk my talk because i'm gonna keep coming after this guy his back is gonna touch every single rope in that ring and uh, i promise you that that it's gonna be probably the fight of the night because when i'm in shape i'm i'm not gonna i'm relentless in pressure and i'm gonna keep coming that's all there is to it and it sounds like Johnny has been in your quarter since his passing from that story you just shared and how he got you to this point, got you to a place where you're getting some great sparring, getting some great people behind you. And obviously with all these people like Fernando and all these people watching over you, I'm sure Johnny has a lot to do with that. You're taking on a great fighter, an undefeated fighter. He's 17-0, and 0, Brad Solomon. I mean, why are you taking this particular huge step forward? Why this in, at this point in your career? Are you feeling that good where you think you're going to be able to take away that O and, you know, after Saturday won't be there anymore? Yes, I do. Um, like I said, spiritually, mentally, and focused and just physically ready because this time I'm ready. You know, this time I got to showcase myself. Uh, this guy was ranked number one at, and the WBA at, when he fought last and he was ranked number five by the WBC. So he's not, yeah, I know he's no joke. He's, 
he's a top rated top ten fighter and and uh, we're coming to get him or we're not gonna give him no you know this is gonna be the hardest fight that he's ever had because I'm just gonna keep coming, you know, this is gonna be one of the fights of the night because I make you fight when I'm in shape and I keep coming forward, you're gonna have to fight me. Regardless of whatever whatever you bring, he's gonna be running. Like I said, he better be one step ahead of me, he's gonna be getting cut off the ring and, and I'm just gonna attack. That's my plan. I know I ain't no boxer, no outside I I don't have good boxing skills, whatever. I'm I I don't plan on that. I plan on putting the pressure, breaking them down and taking them out. I'm not I'm I'm not trying to go decision. I'm trying to go get them. That's it. Plain and simple. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Don't leave it to the judges to do it for you. In your last fight, uh, you fought John Revish, which you brought people to their feet. I remember watching that fight. You know, you took him out in a, a few rounds. You stole the show on that card. And from what you're saying, you make it sound like you're going to steal the show on this particular card, too. Are you training any different for this particular fight that you have on Saturday night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh... I got a better diet in. Um, the weight's going to be at 148 pounds. They change it on us, so I hope they give us the eight ounce gloves. Cause I'm um, the last couple fights I was kind of asked because we fought in Vegas before, not this last one, but the ones before when I fought in Vegas when I was taking these short notice fights. I requested the 10 ounce because I was just I wasn't confident and I wasn't fully training. You know what I mean? I just wanted to pace myself and and get through the rounds. You know. But this time, I'm, there's no excuse. I want the eight ounce. I want to put the pressure. I'm going to keep coming. Robert Garcia didn't want to change too much of my, my game, but uh, he just threw in some extra little pointers in there to help me out. And uh, so did Donald uh, Leary. Uh, they both helped me out. Great man and uh, great sparring over here in Oxnard, California. And what is it like training with Javier Pelos Garcia, of course, the nephew of Robert Garcia? What is it like getting those rounds in with him? Oh, yeah, man, he's great, man. Uh, he's good. Uh, he said he wants me back there, man, that I give him the most pressure that he's ever been with. I put that pressure on these guys, you know, and that's a whole different type of feeling. And uh, I plan to take that with me into the ring. I know this guy, uh, He's his record shows that he's not a very big puncher, but um, I've been hit by some big boys, and this guy's not going to hurt me. I, I, I know I'm going to walk through his punches, and, and I'm, I might take a couple... To give one, you know what I mean. But I'm coming. Um, there's, I'm gonna be relentless in there. I'm not playing. I'm coming. Just, I'm hungry. You know what I mean. And and uh, I only had three amateur fights. Uh, I had to go pro at. Uh, I started late in my career, but uh, I actually had a. They forced me to go pro after because I fought an exhibition and um, I ended up getting cut in like the third round. Um, I got mad. I was like, "This is an exhibition. This guy's trying to kill me." So I got mad, ended up knocking him out in the fourth round, and uh, that's when that's how I got my name at the Hurricane El Huracan because uh, the promoter actually gave it to me. I actually wanted it. They've always called me El Toro since I was little, my dad. So I I wanted Del Toro, but I got, got stuck with El Huracan, the Hurricane. What's the difference from training? You know, you obviously had two former world champions as trainers, you know, Johnny Tapia and now Robert Garcia. Is there a big difference as far as your training style, uh, or is it pretty much the same? And how does that work to your favor or disadvantage? Because a lot of people, I'm sure, will be saying that the quick change in trainers might make a difference uh, in your style. It's different. Um, Johnny's more uh, elusive. You know, he was a mover. He he didn't really want to change my style either, Johnny. He just wanted me to keep coming, putting my pressure, but smart pressure. Same thing with Robert. That's what he wanted me to do. And uh, Johnny was just nonstop, always on me, like uh, just on the mitts, man. I, that guy can go forever. He would be like, who's next? <laughs> after one, after the other, he'd, he'd do like 30 rounds, 40, 50 rounds of mitts in one day with all the kids and all that stuff. So Robert and uh, I've been getting mitts done by uh, Donald Leary, one of uh, Brandon's man's too Van and Reels and uh, so he's he's been getting me in there to just shoot my punches and get add some power to him um, take my time more with Johnny it was a little bit more quick pace now I'm taking my time more a little bit and trying to stick those shots in harder if you don't mind me asking I hope that's, it's not too personal but how did you find out about the news about Johnny's passing I knew right away you know uh, I, I found out right away uh same time, within probably an hour, somebody had called me and I got the call. But uh, 
it was it was kind of rough. I didn't want to believe it at first, but then I started seeing some posts, and sure enough, it was true. And I just want to just ask God to bless his family, and I know it's difficult for them, and I miss them back home. But uh, yeah, it was it was it was rough. You know, I, I broke down a couple of times, and I was um, I'd be running and uh, just break down all of a sudden. You know, it's crazy, but then I'd start laughing laugh right after because of the crazy stuff that he would do, man. He was just so unbelievable. He was, he was just great, and and he was just a different kind of person. He was just, just uh, I don't, I can't even explain it. He was just a different kind of person. Yeah, uh, give his shirt off his back for you all the time. He'd show up to the gym without shirts and like, where's your shirt? I like, oh, I get some good. <laughs> oh, so he did it literally then. Oh no, he did it literally. We had we got in trouble over there at the fights. They got mad at me because I had to keep getting them shirts. People at the at some fights were like, "Nice shirt. Oh, you want my shirt? Oh, you take it off." And they were selling the shirts, so they're getting mad at him because he was literally giving the shirts off his back, and uh, I'd have to go get him, <laughs> go get him some shirts back because they were selling them at the at the booth, and go get him another one and take it back to him. Yeah, yeah, I was a Paul Bear for him, our team, man. We, he was a, he was a great, great, great guy, man. So this coming fight, I mean, what are we gonna expect from you on this particular fight on Saturday? What are we gonna expect from Hector Munoz? What are you gonna bring to the table on that night? I'm gonna bring to the table with everything I got. Keep coming forward, nonstop pressure. Um, like I said, he's gonna be running. His back is gonna touch every rope in that ring. I guarantee it. I put a lot of pressure on the last guy, but this time I got my punches more down and more, my body's more defined. See, I've been eating better. I've got more strength training in. My last fight, I didn't do no strength training. I got great training with Chris Chavez while I was in Albuquerque and uh, got some great training here with uh, Robert Garcia, Donald Leary, and a great sparring with all these guys out here. So uh, you're going to see a great fight. I'm coming with everything, with my team, with Johnny in my corner. And this fight for my family and Johnny, and uh, that's what it is. You'll see, and when you see the fight, you're not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna hold nothing back. There's, I'm not the type of guy that says, oh, "I'm gonna do this and just box around." No, I'm coming forward. I'm gonna keep coming. I'm coming after him, and that's what it is. It sounds like you're not gonna be tonight. And the weather forecast for Saturday in the city of Carson says that there's gonna be a hurricane ready to hit. I have yes, a feeling sir. that Team Tapia and Albuquerque, New Mexico, will be alive and well after your particular fight on Saturday night. Hector, thank you very much for coming on to theboxingbar.com, and good luck to you from everything inside me, man. I really hope you pull this off and you show everybody in the sport of boxing what you're made of and what's going to happen in the future. I believe you are the future, and I believe there is going to be a hurricane coming. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, and thanks to all you listeners out there. Thank you.